Hi everyone, welcome back. This is uh, part five of the um, Mark IV German captured um, World War I tank. Um, this is a one month build. I'm building it between October the 11th and November the 11th. It will be completely finished, built, painted, weathered and everything within a month, I hope. I'll get as far as I can anyway. Um, I intend to work on it pretty much every day. So we're up now to stage nine. Um, in the last part, in part four, we built this box unit up here and, and uh, added the photo etch and everything. So now we're going to look at part nine and we need to make these straps that go over the exhaust. Now I'm not really quite ready to fit them yet, but I thought I'd make them anyway um, because it's a good little tutorial to show you the correct way to anneal brass. Now many people talk about just, I've seen one guy who just lays a sheet of photo etch, the complete sheet, out in front of him and gets a blow lamp and just goes like that over the top of it, literally do, 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 and that's annealed. No, that's wrong. Other people say they heat it just to get it to change colour and that anneals it. Yes, it does to a certain extent, but the correct way to anneal any non-ferrous metal like brass or copper is to get it to a near cherry red and then quench it. It's the opposite of steel. If you if you heat steel to cherry red, quench it in water, it will it will make it hard. With um, brass and copper, if you heat it to near cherry red, get it hot and quench it in water, it makes it soft. You can then work with it, like for, for aircraft seatbelts, it works fantastically. You can work with it and then over time it will return to its original state. Um, if you look back many, many years ago, uh, people with A-series mini engines racing them, they used to use copper head gaskets. It was like a solid single piece of copper cut into the shape of a head gasket. And they used them because they sealed extremely well. They were um, obviously very flat. And um, what they used to do was take them out of the engines and they used to um, heat them up and then quench them and they could use them again because the the metal goes softer and then it would you know be a head gasket again compress into its shape and then it would go hard over time so you know I'm, I'm, I'm an engineer and Rolls-Royce trained and everything and I know for a fact that with you know stuff like um, copper and brass reacts the opposite way to steel. So when someone tells you just heat it up until it changes colour and that's it, yes it does soften it to a certain extent but you can get it really soft like lead if you do what I'm doing here. So I'm going to take a cigarette lighter, okay so I found the lighter that works um, and also I've used smaller tweezers so there's less of a heat sink but if you watch this now, I'll heat this now in this lighter, the brass will start to glow red, there we go starting to glow and in the water and now that you can see it's changed color if you look you can see how it's changed color there and that is now annealed as soft as anything you can do anything you want with that so let's just do that once more give it a glow Starting to glow now, red, there we go, and then in the water, as you can see, change colour. And you can see that on the end there, it's all turned over from the, uh, from the heat. So there you go, that's the way to anneal brass, um, especially larger parts. And uh, yeah, and now what you can do with this, you can just do anything with it. And it will just conform to any shape you want. Then when you want to flatten it back out, just put it down, push it down, and you go flat again. You can do anything with it. It's wonderful for seat belts, but obviously don't try it with the pre-painted ones. Okay, now I need to roll these and um, get them to fit the the silencer. Now I know the silencer is roughly five millimeters in diameter. Well, it, it is. It's four point nine five millimeters. So what I use here, I've got a, a rubber. Um, that you can really read that but it's from the Bovington Tank Museum it says the Tank Museum here um, and it's uh, when I saw it there it's actually sold as a, as, as a novelty eraser I think for kids for school it's a quite big rubber but I like to use it for as soon as I saw it I realised what I could use it for so um, 
yeah, I thought I'd get it for uh, for rolling brass. So what I'm going to do is put it down on here. I've got a metal rod. What I'm going to do is just literally roll like this, and you'll see that the piece of brass will start to conform. And the harder you push, the tighter the radius. And then if you need to get even tighter, what I do then is use a um, a sanding sponge. Push that down on there like that. Take your metal rod. Let's get it. And now you can see that it's tightened right up now. So that's how you can make your, your brass roll. And this time, just in case you haven't got one of these rubbers, I'll show you going straight from the Make sure the bolts are on the outside, straight on the sanding stick, and there you go. Now, you can see there what the problem is, I've gone too tight. So all I do is lay off the pressure, straighten out a bit. If you lay off the pressure, look, it doesn't go tight. The, the, tight, the more you push, the tighter it goes. So let's get it down to about 5mm. And there we are, there's another one. Um, you can see there I've fallen foul of one of the issues not going right to the end so see I've got straight now on this that's what you want because it's got to go um straight over and out it's like a um like a u-clamp rather than a first full circle but if you are making a full circle make sure in fact i'll show you on here now make sure you go right to the ends so that you get that full circle all the way you can see here now i'm rolling it right around like that and what I've done now is made a complete loop, so there's no problem with the ends anymore. Okay, but it's so soft that I can just pull it back to what shape I want anyway. So um, there's a little educational bit on the how to roll brass. And just quickly guys, I want to show you, remember I made this loop? This is how I'll straighten it out. Take these Tamiya photo edge bending pliers and just literally grab the ends Pull them straight, just like that. So now we've got a U shape. Squeeze it together with the fingers. Put it over the silencer, like this. Get it so it fits nice and tightly over it. And then using the Tamiya bending pliers, just get it even on the ends. I know you can't really see much what I'm doing here, but try and be utmost and then these bolt bits on the end they need to be bent up so we go like that bend that one up turn it over get the other side bend that one up these Tamiya bending pliers are a great tool but to be honest with you you can get stuff like this really cheap um, and it's just as good and I mean one of the beauty these they've got big they've got rounded ends but you can get these these cheap tools and they do exactly the same job I mean I'll show you you, you don't need to spend all the money on the time your tools um, in fact I will show you something that um, I was actually quite disappointed in when I got mine um, I got them off eBay so I couldn't really send them back. If I got them from UMP or something, I would have returned them. But if you look at my <coughs> Tamiya bending pliers, <coughs> if you can see them there closed up, if you look, you can see they don't close evenly. I have to push them over as soon as I close them again. So when you're actually folding, this, well, they're not in line on the sides, so it's a bit, um, a bit awkward to use. But uh, yeah, not the, not overly impressed for what they cost. Um, in fact, I've never looked, but I bet these actually line up perfectly. Yeah, they do. Look, they they line up absolutely perfectly. So yeah, there's another little tip for you to save some money. Keep the missus happy, whatever. <laughs> I'm lucky I don't have one of those. Never have had. Never had kids. Just me, myself, and I. People say, don't you get lonely? 
do what I want to do when I want to do it. No. There we go. So now that should fit on there. Lovely. There we go. That's that clamp done. So uh, there we have it. I'll get on with some more modelling then. Okay, guys. So um, back to the plastic now. And a little bit of photo etch. So um, yeah, we're... Uh, going to assemble this box with the, so add some brackets, add a shield on the back and then this actually goes on to the back of the tank here. So um, I'm going to go and do stage 10 now, live on the, on the camera so you can watch how it all goes together, uh, including the photo etch and bending and everything. So um, yeah, sit back and enjoy. Got all the parts here, all cleaned up. Um, let's get the instructions down so I can see what's going on. Uh, turn all the parts over the right way so I can identify which is which and I've got the photo etch over here I better get myself some super glue uh, I'm not sure if this is um... no you see that's gone a bit like jelly so therefore it's no good to use what I'm going to do is just bring the camera forward a bit so that I don't keep going off camera because I like to work about here. So um, yeah, get a little drop of super glue, tiny little drop. There we go. That's ready. So if you can hear something in the background, that's the um, ISM channel. Um, I would have the pricks of plastic on from Dutch Cigar Modeler, but unfortunately, uh, sometimes you get some swearing on there, and I don't really want swearing on the channel at the moment being as I'm new and everything well, let me get this light better for you, there we go right, so using my Tamiya pliers just going to line up the uh, fold line with the end of the pliers there fold over and then do the same again this way and fold over you use a photo etch press when you actually get that fold line you don't have to be that precise with small parts like this with longer sections, you do. If you watch my, um, uh, what was it? What was it I was doing where I, um, oh, that the was that the, um, I think it was the B2, where I folded the photo etch and uh, where you get a long straight edge. And I showed you on there how to do it using a bending tool. So if you have a look at that, B2, I think it's part six. And I'll show you there about folding longer sections of photo etch and how to get the, uh, the bend accurately by using a single sided razor blade. So, a um, bit of self promotion there, eh? Nothing wrong with that. So, I'm just going to check how these fit. These go in here. So, that's going to fit. I'm just going to go into the glass. Okay, so that's got to fit in there. We need to make sure it goes in there. Uh, make sure it fits easily. If it fits too tight, it's like to flick out and fly across the room. So we'll just check the other one. If any of you guys can recommend a good, um, you know, um, like a baseball cap style visor, I don't know what you call them, overhead visors or whatever, then please let me know. I've seen them on Amazon. I, I've seen them ranging from like sort of nothing up to a hundred quid sort of thing, I think. So, uh, yeah, please advise. Let me know what I should be looking at. So I'm just going to literally dip the part in like that. And then I can glue it on just like that. And then push that down just to make sure it's square. And there we go. That's on there. No, it's not. It's not on there properly. Hang on a second. I know I'm off camera. There we go. Now it's on there properly. You can probably see that there. So uh, what I'm going to do is get a tiny drop of super glue on here. And all I've done there is just a tiny drop of super glue, run it into the joint there and then rub my finger and that will capillary down. So let's do the same on this side now. So I'm going to touch that there, touch that in there, touch that in there. Make sure you don't ever, if you do it this way, don't ever just stick it right in because you'll end up with the glue all over your tweezers. There we go. I'll just 
just um, grab some super glue into the corners like that and that will uh, there you go that will go in like that so that's all that's those bits of photo etch fitted it's like a photo etch fest for you guys at the moment isn't it a lot of people don't like photo etch I, I love it so, um, I mean how else would you reproduce that that beautifully in 35th scale you know, it's, um, it's lovely and, um, and also if you wanted to now you could like bend that and, Whatever, if you nailed it, you could really sort of go to town on it and make it bent and jagged and godly as well. So that's those sides done. I'm going to move these little brackets out of the way. So um, it looks like we've got the same issue again as with this whole kit all the way through those box sections. You get no real proper, um, no proper location for anything. It's all just wedges and stuff. Um, so I'm assuming that goes like that. Let's just check this piece here. This is the front, so that goes on like that. And then the sides go on. So what I'm gonna do is get my extra thin and just, just put a little bit in there. Just to check that's okay move that over now so it's um central I mean, that's gone off quick that's glued really well that panel it's almost like some of this kit glues really well and some doesn't with the um, with the extra thin so this one's gonna go on like that so I'm assuming nope that's the wrong way around that one goes on like that dumbass Drop a glue down there, hold that one in, and then this one goes on the other side, like so. Drop a glue in there, like that. And now I'm just going to put a drop of glue in the sides here to hold it there, and we'll see how that goes. Oh, by the way, guys, I bought another Wing Nut Wings kit which was delivered yesterday. And I bought another wing net wings kit which was delivered to work today, which I'm gonna pop in and pick up tomorrow. So um yeah. I got the bug I think. There's one good thing with wing net wings. Unlike any other model kit, I think pretty much, you can buy them, you can put them away, and if you decide in a few months you don't want them anymore, or in a few years or whatever, if well, I leave a few years you probably make money. But you know that if you um if you actually decide you don't want to build them anymore, you can easily get your money back on them. Um, they really are stunning. Now I shouldn't have put these sides on, I should have put the top on first. So there you go, because those photo etch pieces of brass in there, they're stopping me sliding this under. But they're stopping me sliding that side under. So maybe I can just push that side under. There we go. Yeah, you can get it in. But there's a rivet, if you look at this, there's a rivet there. There's no rivet there, so you can slide that under there and then kind of just flex that and slop it in, yeah, like that. So it does go together. And in fact, this probably is out of all these boxes we're making that are just butted up together, this is probably the best one of all. There we go, just push it down there to make sure it's flat and square. And there we have it, there's that rear box. So uh, that's together. Now what's next? We got these two little pieces here that go on either side, C9 and C10. So let's um, stick them on. So the bigger ones go on the bottom and the smaller ones go on the top. It looks like the top ones actually, let's see if I can put them on. And then add some glue. Yeah. And if you do things that way round, if you put the glue on first and then push the bar on, if the glue oozes out, you end up with like a it looks like a miniature weld around it, which for this would be um, incorrect because it's not welded. 
But um, if you put the glue on after, let the capillary action pull the pull the glue under, you won't get that great big squeezing out ooze coming out. So just like that, and then position it. And there you go. You see, you get a far neater. It's far neater doing it that way round. Okay, now I'm just going to push this panel here is going to go up against it. The two holes go at the top. I'm just going to push this up against it to make sure they're square to each other. Okay, you can see that that one needs to be tips around a little bit. Here we are. Okay, and then we'll do the same on the bottom. Now these fit a little differently, so I don't know how I'm going to fit these, but... Uh... Let's get my tweezers on there. Put that in place. Drop a glue. There we go, that's in place. Okay, so that's those four brackets added. So now we add this piece here. As per the instructions, we've got the four bolts at the top, six bolts at the bottom, or bivets or whatever they are. But also they've engineered this so you can put it up so you've know, you got wider slots on the bottom than you have on the top. So I'm just going to place that on there. Make sure everything lines up. Still needs to be counted around a bit. There we go, just to get it square. And then drop a glue in there. Drop a glue in there. those down and there we go there's that assembly done and it's ready to put on so we could take our tight chassis now let's take that piece off the top um, and this is going to glue on like that and it fits beautifully so I'm just gonna Run some extra thin down each corner. Sorry, I'm off the screen again, guys. I don't know, please tell me in the comments if you. I mean, I could either I could have the camera further away so you kind of see everything. Oops. Um, or have it close up so you can see what I'm doing. I just think with having the camera up like this, get the light out of the way. I have the camera up like this. It's hard for you to see what I'm actually doing, I think. But let me know. You want it high up, low down? You know, it's, um, the whole reason for doing this is for you guys to see. But uh, I like to have it a bit further forward. And then I have to get the light above. So, um... There we go, that's that glued on. Now... I'm not going to add D17 or E34 because again they go around the exhaust and then we've got this E20 to go on. So I'm going to do this after the exhaust has been put on, um, which will probably be tomorrow now. So um, we'll call that a wrap for that one. 
thanks for watching thanks ever so much for staying with me um, I enjoy your support so please leave me all the comments you can um, it's now what is it? it's 22 57 almost 11 p.m. on uh, Friday the 12th of October 2018 and here we go we've got the the main hull pretty much done we've done the joints we've got the exhaust made up we've made this little entrance hatch on the top we've built the box that goes around the exhaust we've done the uh, photo etch brass brackets for the for the exhaust when that goes on so yeah I'll um I'll see you guys tomorrow and uh, we'll, we'll go from there bye bye now